Hey everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. We got us a beer here from Terrapin Beer uh, Company, guys. These are out of Athens, Georgia. Haven't been buying much of their beers lately because they sold out. Uh, once that happens, normally I don't buy their beers anymore. Uh, and there are a lot of breweries that are selling out to the big guys. And uh, we just had it happen. Uh, they just bought the remaining part of uh, Heineken just bought the remaining part of uh, Lagunitas. So it's, it's a shame. Uh, a lot of times uh, it helps the brewery with uh, more capital, more funds for expansion and distribution and all that, but unless they maintain control, a lot of times the beers change. Uh, and there are some people that will argue with me over that, uh, but you know, it's my opinion. Uh, even the people that drink uh, the Bourbon County stuff that uh, that's, that's done up in Chicago uh, from Goose Island says it's not as good as it was before they bought out. Uh, I still think that beer is pretty tasty. Uh, and I've had a lot of it sent to me uh, because it's still a well-made beer. But as long as they maintain control of what's going into the beer, the recipes and all that, and they'll start changing a bunch of stuff. And a lot of times, once they get bought out, uh, people leave and uh, go other places or do their own thing, and uh, things change. That's the way it is. But anyway, uh, this is their Walking Dead Blood Orange IPA, and this was sent to me by Rico. And Rico sent a note here that says, Terrapin, the Walking Dead Blood Orange, a collaboration between Terrapin and the hit TV series. Well, I can't tell you a whole lot about the Walking Dead because I have never seen an episode of it, guys. I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't have time. Uh, he said he purchased it uh, a few weeks back for $2. And he's got it's a 6.7 American IPA, but the can says it's 7.7. .7. So I don't know if he mistyped that. Uh, but the can says 7.7 .7, and it's probably a different edition and uh, they may have done this before I'm not sure because uh, Ray Beer has it at 6.7 percent also Beer Advocate has it at 7.7 .7, and Untapped has it at 7.7 .7. so maybe he got those notes from from Ray Beer because they do have it at 6.7 .7. uh, maybe they've done it before and that edition was 6.7, but this can clearly says 7.7 .7 on the side of it. So, uh, and he says 85 IBUs, so I don't know if, if that has changed. Uh, it has 85 on the uh, beer advocate, uh, I mean a rate beer where it's got 6.7. Uh, says 73 on it uh, on untapped for the 7.7 .7 edition which is unusual for the IBUs to go down when the ABV goes up usually they try to balance that out so I don't know guys I'm just telling you what I'm reading here and uh, he says it has an enjoy by date of 8 10 17 hard to see with the ink color they use and he thinks it look like they're giving it a six month shelf life so he thinks it was canned on uh, February the 10th of 2017. And today is May the 7th, uh, February, March, April, May. So it's almost three months old. So that, and to me, that is at the end of its shelf life as far as I'm concerned. If it was available here and it hadn't been bought out and I was interested in buying it and I seen this date and it was right at three months old, I would probably not pick it up or pay for it or purchase it. 
I don't buy those beers when they get to the end of the shelf life. That's the reason why I'm not buying a whole lot of the two hearted stuff because the grocery stores around here and even out at the barrel chest and Martin, their bottles still had February on them. So we didn't buy them. Uh, but the cans had the, uh, the, the bottles had the beginning like February 2nd. But the cans had like April 22nd or 23rd. So we bought a four pack of their cans because it still had a couple of, it was a couple of weeks fresher. And if it doesn't get, when we go back to get it again, if it's still got February the 2nd or the 22nd, we're probably not going to buy it again because it has reached its end of its shelf life. As far as I'm concerned, I want my stuff fresh. I mean, I'll buy it if it's a month old. I'll even buy it if it's two months old. Once you get to the three months, I'm not interested in, 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 in buying it. So, Well, let's get on with this. I don't want it to be a huge, long, drawn out video, but it probably is. And before I get into it, I've only got four openers left, guys. If you're interested in one, shoot me an email. Still got plenty of t-shirts. Still shipping those out. Shipping one out again tomorrow. So if you need a shirt, shoot me an email and let me know what size you want and what color, black or white, and we'll get it out to you. All right. Uh, commercial description on this says, Terrapin Beer Company and Walking Dead have teamed up to brew the official beer of the undead, made with blood orange peel and a horrific amount of hops. This bloodthirsty red IPA will have you prepared for the upcoming zombie apocalypse. Well, I'm prepared. All the guns are loaded. Bring them on. Got the big clips. Got the big drums. So, bring them on, boys. Alright, let's get this thing open and see what we got. And I will tell you why I'm pouring this cuisine is curried in a tie, your typical IPA food pairing, cheese and pepper, Monterey pepper jack, sharp blue cheddar, stronger cheeses, gorgonzola, Limburger, and the meat is poultry fish, shellfish, and salmon, and I'll add grilled meat to that. Flash large a pint, nonic tumbler mug, sign Sidell. I'm using my favorite tulip glass today. And it says here, not recommend for extending salary. And it does have the date on the bottom of it. And... Uh, it is a Best Buy of uh, 8, which is August 10th of 17. Way too long a shelf life for an IPA, guys. But they want to do that so they can sell more of it. That's the bottom line. This beer is going to be a hot, uh, a multi mash by the time August gets here. I would definitely not buy this beer in August. Probably it's at the, the maximum shelf life for me to pay my money for it. But I appreciate Rico picking it up. Let me try it. Uh, it is a red, it looks like a, a red ale, and they're calling it a red IPA. Uh, I can see the light plump through it there, guys, even in the big bowl part. It is a filtered beer, finger of head, slightly off-colored, not foamy white like a, a lot of IPAs are. So, let's get your nose to it. The hops are pretty subdued. Just a little bit of hint of citrusiness and some pine. Does have a nice orange sweetness to the back end of it. I guess that's hopefully from the blood oranges that they've used. But uh, nothing outstanding. Definitely not a West Coast style for sure, but these guys are in Georgia. More of an East Coast smell on the IPA uh, version. So let's taste it. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Citrusy. It does have some strong bitterness from the hops. Definitely tell us an IPA. But it doesn't have that up in your face hot profile. And that's probably not what they were going after a West Coast style. Yeah, you can definitely tell they've used some, some oranges in this, some blood oranges. I am getting that orangey taste to it. But not a super hot profile. And uh, not a lot of uh, grapefruit or pine or, or tropical fruit notes on this beer. So, right out of the fridge, let's. Sip on it for a while, see what we end up, end up with. Uh, not overly impressed right now. And I really didn't expect to be uh, 
they produce a, a lot of beers and used to produce a lot of good beers but uh, I don't know what the influence of them being bought out uh, has done to the beers so let's sip on it and see what we what we, what we end up with all right guys I'm back got a little left here been sipping on it for a little bit my slicing is left on the glass alcohol is very well hidden for 7.7 percent uh, definitely an East Coast style uh, IPA uh, the hops are not really up in your face heavy profile of the West Coast style or the New England style does uh, or even the double dry hop versions do uh, decent beer not outstanding I don't think it's into the A category at all uh, decent beer uh, fairly average IPA uh, to me guys so uh, does have a very nice reddish color. And now that it's warmed up, I am getting a slight hint of the maltiness of the beer. Probably wasn't this malty when it was put in the can, but at, at three months it's starting starting to get there. Final chug. I don't know why they would want to put that long of a shelf life on it. They don't put that long of a shelf life on a Budweiser, so why would they do it on a craft beer, especially an IPA, other than just sell more of it? So, uh, to me, guys, it's a B beer. 85, that's where I'm going to put it. Uh, decent, but definitely not to the A category, outstanding, world class, or anything like that. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you buy this beer, you're going to get it at a reasonable price. Ten dollars or less for a six pack, uh, especially if you don't like that West Coast style up in your face, over powerful hop aroma. Uh, Bear Advocate has it at eighty four, one number away from that, so we're kind of in agreement there. And over to Rate Beer, Rate Beer has it at eighty six, I'm one number away from that, so I'm right in the middle. We got an eighty four, eighty five, and an eighty six, and which are all B numbers. Final check in, we run over to Untap. They have it at 3.7, which is their B category also. Almost to their B plus, but 3.7 is their B category to me. So B beer all the way around us. Everybody thinks it's a B beer and, and basically to me that's what it is. So decent beer, but nothing outstanding. So if you've had this one from Terrapin Beer Company, this is their Walking Dead. So uh Okay, beer. That's where I'm going to put it. If you've had this one, let me know what you think, guys. Come on back tomorrow. Maybe we'll dig something a little tastier out of the grid. See you then.